Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. Stay black. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?
Today is Friday, March 8th, 2024. Coming up on Roland Martin Unfiltered, streaming live on the Black Star Network. Folks, uh, an Illinois family seeking answers after six police officers were placed on leave for killing an unarmed black man in the middle of the night during a reported domestic violence call. The family of Isaac Goodlow uh, says he was in bed asleep when the cops entered his home unannounced and shot him within seconds. We'll talk to the family attorney. Tennessee House Republicans, folks, stunningly undo the work of the family of Tyree Nichols in the Memphis City Council. And the lead Republican behind it literally lies to Tyree's parents about this. We will be joined by him and the attorney, Ben Crump. Y'all, this is an unbelievable story, and it goes to show you how shameful Republicans are in Tennessee. Republicans not too happy about Biden's State of the Union. They still are ticked off. Ooh, we're going to talk with Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, but y'all, we also going to play for y'all the Republican response. It literally was a horror show. House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries goes off on Republicans, especially Marjorie Taylor Greene, for their behavior during President Biden's speech. Uh, plus, y'all, uh, other news of the day. Man, it is time to bring the funk. I'm Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Let's go. He's got it. Whatever the miss, he's on it. Whatever it is, he's got the scoop, the fact, the fine. And when it breaks, he's right on time. And it's rolling. Best believe he's knowing. Putting it down from sports to news to politics. With entertainment just for kicks, he's rolling. Yeah. An Illinois family demanding answers to know why the names of the six police officers involved in the fatal shooting of 30-year-old Isaac Goodlow III have not been released. Goodlow was in bed when these officers entered the home and within seconds shot and killed him. Reports say the officers were responding to a reported domestic violence incident Goodlow's family says the officers did not announce themselves before entering Isaac's apartment in the early morning hours of February 3rd. The video, folks, we're about to show you is extremely disturbing. And so we want to give you a few seconds to turn away uh, or leave the room if necessary. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Here's one of the body cam videos showing what happened from when the officers arrived at the apartment uh, to EMS arriving themselves. I don't think you need a key. Mm -hmm. Police! Meryl Street Police! Through this door here. Yeah. Oh, fuck. fuck! No, no, no! Stop, stop, stop! Hey, he's right here! No, he's right here! Hey, show me your hands! Show me your hands! Show me your hands, man! Fuck! Shut him up, shut him up! I got a lethal. Get out, get out of there! Behind you. Keep your eyes open. Fuck! Are you back there? Did you see back there? Yeah. All right. Get the light. Start the medics. Roll. Roll. Roll towards you. Roll towards you. Get in front. Get him on the back. Get him on the back. Grab his legs. 
I, something Grab got his me. Legs. Grab his legs! Is this something quick or what? No. All right, all right. Are you hit? Are no, you good? Dude, I'm I think that was a taser. I think that was a taser, Prom. Second breeze. Are you hit? Second breeze. Are you good? Okay. Are you hit? Are you okay? Are you physically okay? Yes, yeah. Here, let's okay. do some aid. Let's do some aid here. Are you okay? Yeah. Close. Uh, give me some gloves anyway. In the apartment. It's on you. Hey man, Isaac. Hey man, Isaac. Hey, I need you to stay with me, man. Here, open your eyes, man. Isaac, Isaac man. I'm cutting hey. your shirt. Isaac, you got life? Here. Isaac. CPR started. CPR started. Isaac, man, open your eyes. Six officers were placed on administrative leave. Joining us from Chicago uh, is the Goodlow family attorney, Andrew Stroth. Andrew, glad to have you here. So I, I, this is where I'm confused. Why were they called? Well, they were called because there was a domestic incident. His girlfriend had called, uh, his girlfriend's sister called the police uh, because there was an incident between the two of them. She was then out of the apartment, away from Tom's way, and as you saw on the disturbing video you just sent, you just showed your audience, without cause or provocation, the Carroll Stream police officers broke into Isaac's room and instantaneously shot and killed him. He was unarmed, 30 years old, and they came in with a tactical ballistic shield and tactical gear like it was a military operation and unjustifiably shot Isaac Goodlow in the heart, one shot in the heart uh, on that fateful morning. So I, I need our folks to do this here. So I need you to so take, go, go, go back, cue the video, um, because I, I'm watching this now. Um, play it, keep, bring the, just, just bring the audio down, play it. Uh, and so, all right, so, so Andrew, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm utterly confused. It's domestic violence. On the call, I take it y'all heard the 911 call. Yes. On the 911 call, does her sister say he's armed and dangerous? He has a gun, he has weapons, anything like that? Yeah, we, we have not actually, full disclosure, we have not heard all the tape, but we know from what our witnesses have told us that there was none of that. We know that um, there was an incident. But, right. but there wasn't any weapons, and he was alone in his apartment, in his bed, sleeping. Right. And here's the other thing, Roland. She wasn't living with him. It was only his apartment. So the fact that the that they were allowed in his unit to kill him the way they did in his bedroom, and then if you notice, who, after who? they shoot him in the heart, they turn him over, handcuff right. him before even rendering any aid. Who, who let them in the apartment? Well, the the, uh, the maintenance man let them in the, the main door to his apartment. And then, as you saw on your video, the police broke into his bedroom door. All right, so, so control room, go back to the beginning of the video. So, Andrew, this is, again, where I, I'm confused. All right, so if you have a, a domestic disturbance call, domestic violence, in a normal circumstance, wouldn't the cops... That's right. Police, would knock, the cop, would wouldn't the cops warrant. knock on the door first? That's, I'm, again, I'm just, you would think you would knock on the door first. If you arrive on the scene, first, second, if I'm not hearing anything, if I'm not hearing anybody, any screams or whatever, okay, so now I'm trying to ascertain, I'm now on the scene trying to ascertain what's going on. Now, folks, do the big favor, bring the audio up, then press play. Uh, bring the audio up, then press play. All right? So I want to I wanna hear this. I don't think you need a key to Police! Carol Street Police!
we go through this door here. Yeah. Oh, fuck! Fuck! No, no, no! Stop, stop, stop! stop. All right, stop it right there. Okay, so now, I'm not a police officer, um, but I would think if cops are entering Carroll Stream Police, if anyone is here, what I heard was Carroll Stream Police, like they were in a normal conversation. That's then they're going room to room, and so clearly one of those officers goes into a room and immediately shoots. I don't see in that video where, uh, where Goodloe makes a move for a gun or whatever. I don't hear someone entering, hey, Carroll Stream Police, hold your hands up. It's literally shot. They didn't, they didn't announce themselves. They didn't have consent. They didn't have a warrant. And like you said, they tiptoed in there and there's a black man, a 30-year-old black man in his bed and he shoots instantaneously. I, I, this, so they're placed on leave. This took place last month. February 3rd. We still don't know the officers' names, Roland. We do not know the officers' names what are, to this date. What does the chief say? What does the city, what does the mayor say? What? They, they keep saying they're sorry. We filed a federal civil rights lawsuit two weeks ago, and we're demanding answers. But the fact that to this day, over a month later, this mama, Bonnie Pegram, his sisters and brothers, he has eight siblings, no one knows um, what the officers' names are. No one knows why the officers came in with a ballistic shield and shot within less than a second. I mean, and he was, again, alone in his apartment, unarmed. There was no threat to his girlfriend. Uh, and it's, it's another tragedy of a black man being killed by the police in Carroll Stream just an hour outside of Chicago. Um, so how long, based upon what y'all what y'all know, how long was it from when the call was made and they arrive? Well, the call was made, and then the, the officers, from what we know, there was about 54 minutes while they were outside or in the apartment complex. And we know that the girlfriend was away from the scene and safe. And then for some reason, they decided, instead of just doing nothing or relaxing or or not breaking into his apartment, for some reason they decided to go in there. Well, wait, hold up, hold up. Now, now I'm confused. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When the officers are in the parking lot, do they know in the parking lot that she's safe? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. So wait, 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 wait. So it's not like, hey, a man is barricaded in his apartment with a gun, uh, threatening to kill himself, whatever. They're in the parking lot. They know that she's safe, and then all of a sudden, they wait an hour to go barge in like a military assault? 100%. So no exigent circumstances. Think of Roland Brianna Taylor. Think about these other cases. There was no emergency. There was no exigent circumstances. The cops broke into his apartment with a ballistic shield, shot him in the heart, killed him, and then shot him with a taser, tried to shoot him with a taser afterwards, and then flip him on his face and handcuff him instead of rendering aid. And you got a 30-year-old black man who loved his family and his family loves him who is tragically gone. So we filed a federal civil rights lawsuit almost two weeks ago, and we're demanding answers. The chief has said he's sorry. The mayor has said he's sorry. But that's not enough. This black family deserves answers, and we're going to get those answers. Unbelievable. Andrew Strothka, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Roland. Take care. Going to go to break. We'll be right back. Talk about this with my panel right here. Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause 
to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. I'm Dee Barnes, and on the next frequency, Professor Janelle Hobson joins us to talk about hip hop and its intersection with feminism and racial equality. Plus, her enlightening work with Ms. Magazine and how the great Harriet Tugman connects with women in hip hop. So it was not hard for me to go from Harriet Tubman to hip hop, honestly, because it is a legacy of uh, black women's resistance and black women supporting our community. That's what Harriet Tubman did. That's on the frequency on the Black Star Network. It's John Murray, the executive producer of the new Sherry Shepard Talk Show. This is your boy, Herb Quay. And you're tuned in to Roland Martin Unfiltered. All right, folks, go to my panel. Michael Imhotep, host, African History Network show out of Detroit. Matt Manning, civil rights attorney out of Corpus Christi. Killer Mathea, communication strategist out of D.C. Matt, I hate having to, having to do these stories, play these videos, uh, but the bottom line is, guess what? MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, ABC, NBC, CBS, the other people, they ain't going to do it. Uh, and these families get no attention, uh, and so we have to do this. And I, you saw the video, what, what the hell? Yeah, there's, there's no uh, defense for this. And Roland, you asked the perfect question. The question I was going to ask um, the attorney was how much time was there between the call and when they arrived? And the reason that's so important is what I anticipated the police would argue here is that they were in what's called a hot pursuit. And in hot pursuit, that's a, a circumstance where a police officer can sometimes make entry or otherwise um, do something without a warrant if they're investigating a case. For instance, if somebody's fleeing a scene or if they have reason to believe just like your question, that the woman with whom he was uh, allegedly involved in this incident was still on scene and potentially in danger. But 54 minutes later is crazy to me. I mean, I don't see how they can substantiate that they had any right to enter his, um, his you know, unit at that point, especially because a great number of cases are, are what we call non-arrest cases, where people get arrested or rather charged, and they're not arrested at the time. So if the police didn't have reason to believe she was in that uh, unit and in danger or anybody else was, I don't see why they take the risk of ever entering this unit now. If there's some piece of evidence I don't know of, like a, a warrant or something else, well, number one, I assume Attorney Stroud would have told us that. Yep. And number two, that's the first thing the police would be waving everywhere, saying, hey, we had a warrant or we, you know, there was some reason we could enter. But outside of that, I mean, I, I don't understand why they would take this risk. And beyond that, um, in what I read, the allegation is that he allegedly threw something at him, but I don't see that on the video, number one. And number two, I don't see how any police officer with basic training um, would think that that is something that justifies the use of force, let alone deadly force, um, especially because we haven't heard that narrative. We haven't heard the narrative that they perceived him to have a deadly weapon. So all that being said, I don't see this being defensible at all. I mean, it's still going to be difficult because... It's a civil rights case, but the fact that he's asleep and the body cam show he was not menacing anyone or posing any kind of threat, I don't see how Carol Stream police defend this or get qualified immunity uh, from the courts on this. What is crazy to me, Kelly, again, watching that video, but listening to the video, they walk in and go, Carol Stream police, like it's just a normal conversation, okay? It's a dark apartment, and then when they go into the room, they literally walk straight in, boom! I mean, no, no cops. Uh, yeah, they just automatically fire at a clump under a blanket. Yeah, so when I 
looked at the video, which again, like you said, is incredibly disturbing. I too hate watching these videos, but they are necessary. I was paying attention more so to what I didn't hear. I didn't hear a pause between the time they knocked on the door, if they knocked the door, knocked on the door, and the time they um, busted down the door to get into the apartment. Once they were in the apartment. I didn't hear any signs of a struggle, such as something that would happen in a domestic dispute. When they were walking through the apartment, I didn't hear anything that would indicate that there is trouble afoot, that there is something um, emergent um, that is uh, in need of attention. So for me, to Matt's point, I find it incredibly difficult how they can even call for exigent circumstances, how they can get around these uh, warrant ex uh, exemptions or, yes, warrant exemptions uh, or have any type of excuse for this kind of behavior other than I just felt like going into a black man's house and shooting one. Because um, that's all I see in this video. I don't see any cause for them to be in there, especially when the threat had been removed almost an hour before they got to the door. I, I just, I mean, you know, you, you had the case out of Minneapolis, um, Michael, where they were executed, where they had a no-knock warrant, um, and the young man was shot and killed. Um, right. And at 4 o'clock in the morning, he's reaching for his gun. This... The, there is no way, there is absolutely no way that these officers should not be convicted for what we saw. Yeah, um, I, I think so. But as the article from CBSNews.com states, um, the family of uh, Isaac Goodlow unfortunately has not seen the, the full video. Um, so I don't know what else is on the full video, but in scene, in what we just saw here, what you just showed here on Roland Martin Unfiltered, um, I'm still trying to figure out, and part of our view was covered by the ballistic shield, I'm still trying to figure out what was the threat that caused <laughs> the officer to fire the shot into mm -hmm. Isaac Goodlow, who was sleeping. I'm still trying to figure out what was the threat. Um, and then it's also on top of that, that's disturbing enough, but on top of that, uh, he shot. And then according to the attorney, he was tased before they rendered first aid to him. Okay. Which is, which is something else that's very troubling. Um, and you know, regardless of what the call is that an officer receives, an officer still has to assess the situation, assess the threat level when they arrive there. Because sometimes what you, what the dispatcher was told is not what you actually find when you get there. So um, <laughs> this is crazy right here. Uh, and, and I want to hear from the police chief. Um, what, what did the, what did the officers say when they gave their statements, when they gave their written statements? What, what did they say the threat was that caused them to use lethal force? Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I, it's just, it's unbelievable to me. I just, and, I, and I, I hate, I hate, I understand the PTSD and the trauma black folks deal with when having to see these videos. Um, but I'm gonna say this again. And we hear it from the families, and I need everybody who's watching and listening to understand. We're not, this, this sort of, I go back to when I was at TV One uh, and the president of the network, he was white, white guy. Um, he, he was bothered that basically almost every day we were leading one of these stories. And he was like, well, you know, you know, you know why is this always the case? And I, and I went, well, Brad, because black people keep getting shot and killed. And he sort of right. wanted me, he sort of wanted me to do an explainer each day to explain to our audience why we were doing these stories. And I literally said, Brad, you're white. You need the explainer. My black audience doesn't need me to explain to them why we do these stories. And the problem, again, that I have is, unless a story blows up nationally, mainstream right. media doesn't care. They don't care. We're going to talk about what happened in, in Nashville, excuse me, with, with, with the Republicans on the Tyree Nichols bill 
you aren't seeing national media talk about, the, talk about what happened there because for them, Tyree Nichols' story is no longer a major story. And so if these families don't have a place for their attorneys to come on, for them to come on, for us to highlight these stories, they don't get told. And so that's why um, we show the videos. That's why we provide an opportunity for folks to be able to do this because otherwise these departments will simply get away with this and it'll be swept under the rug and everybody goes back to their jobs and this family is left with a dead son, cousin, uncle, nephew. That's just the reality. All right, folks, going to a break. We come back. Uh, last night, State of the Union, man, President Joe brought Biden brought the heat uh, to Republicans. They are a little salty today. Plus, they mad because the job numbers came out and the economy is doing well. And then they really mad because one of the step for wives in their party gave one of the most horrible responses in American history. We didn't show that BS last night. Ooh, but I'm going to show some of it today. Y'all need to get ready to laugh. But coming up next, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett joins us right here on Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Don't forget to support us in what we do. Join our Bring the Funk fan club. Your dollars are critically important for us to do the work that we do. I can't overstate that. Uh, when you send, and again, we ask for our, fan, for our fans to give on average 50 bucks each, which is $4.19 a month, 13 cents a day, and we appreciate every single dollar. Uh, if, you can, if you can't give that, you can give less. We totally understand, we appreciate that. If you can give more, we appreciate that. But I'm telling y'all, the work that we do, nobody else in Black-owned media is doing. Nobody. Not Essence, not Blavity, not Black Enterprise, not Ebony, not The Grio, not Revolt, not TV One, not, not, not any of these folks. We are doing what nobody else is doing, and that is two daily two-hour shows. Five one-hour weekly shows. And we would love to add more shows. I would love to have more shows on the network. Love, because I got four or five ideas uh, we, can, we can launch if we had the resources. And so please, support us in what we do. Send your check and money order to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. Cash out, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered. PayPal, R. Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zell. Roland at RolandSMartin.com, Roland at RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. We'll be right back. Next on The Black Table with me, Greg Carr. Democracy in the United States is under siege. On this list of bad actors, it's easy to point out the Donald Trumps, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, or even the United States Supreme Court as the primary villains. But as David Pepper, author, scholar, and former politician himself says, there's another factor that trumps them all and resides much closer to many of our homes. His book is Laboratories of Autocracy, a wake-up call from behind the lines. So these state houses get hijacked by the far right, then they gerrymander, they suppress the opposition, and that allows them to legislate in a way that doesn't reflect the people of that state. David Pepper joins us on the next Black Table here on the Black Star Network. Grow your business or career with Grow with Google's wide range of online courses, digital training, and tools. Gain in-demand job skills with flexible online training programs designed to put you on the fast track to jobs in high growth fields. No experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace. Complete the online certificate program on your own terms. Stand out to employers, get on a path to in-demand jobs, and connect with top employers who are currently hiring. Take one professional career certificate program, or all six. Earn a Google career certificate to prepare for a job in a high-growth field like data analytics, project management, UX design, cybersecurity, and more. All professional career certificate programs must be completed by December 31st, 2024. Scan the QR code to complete the application. There are 1,000 scholarships available. 
Grow with Google and J. Hood and Associates. Be job ready and qualify for in-demand jobs. What's good, y'all? This is Doug E. Fresh, and you're watching my brother Roland Martin unfiltered as we go a little something like this. Hit it. It's real. Last night, uh, President Biden gave his State of the Union address. According to CNN, um, the ratings, I'm sorry, the approval percentage for his agenda jumped 17 points. Today, Republicans are just beside themselves. I, I have looked at some of the tweets, and man, they are uh, mad and upset and and just ticked off uh, about getting called out, him calling out the Supreme Court. Uh, a little bit later, we're going uh, to show you uh, Co Congressman Hawking Jeffries' response. But right now, let's chat with Texas Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett. She was in the room last night. And uh, I, I must say, uh, you, you, you had the crazies there. You had Marjorie Taylor Greene wearing her MAGA stuff. You had expelled uh, former Congressman George Santos walking around taking up space uh, in the room. You had Republicans, they wouldn't stand up uh, when it came to hell, trying to end cancer. They wouldn't stand up uh, on uh, all kind of different stuff. Uh, and so uh, it was definitely uh, interesting. What was it like being in the room? Um, <laughs> it's so funny because I was talking to Whip Clark this morning and she said, I need to sit in front of you for every State of the Union address because I was back there talking about some, mm-hmm, yep. And, <laughs> and I was saying things like that part, right? Um, as it relates to the president, listen, we were fired up on our side and I think that the American people, um, are seeing everything that they need to see of the Republican party. The fact that you're not standing up for education of our babies, the fact that you're not standing up against Russia, the fact that you're not standing up for ending cancer. These are things that have nothing to do with party affiliation, but have everything to do with humanity. And the fact that they can't side with humanity tells you everything that you need to know about them. I get that the Democrats may not be the perfect party. I get that I may not be the perfect candidate and the president may not be the perfect candidate. But the reality is that the alternative is nothing like what the reality of the Democrats is, which the Democrats at least were trying. And, and not just trying. I mean, when you hear the president talk about uh, giving teachers a raise, when you hear him talk about, um, again, uh, not, uh, uh, take it, uh, you know, uh, putting Putin in his place, uh, and you see folks sit over there, sit on their hands, you hear him talk about a border bill, and you see Senator Lankford of Oklahoma go, that's true and they still don't like it. That, to me, is what I thought uh, was just interesting. And I'm sitting there going, well, hell, which side y'all on? Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right. You know, I, I will be perfectly honest with you and, and tell you that I don't know where I would be on a vote for the border bill. I'm going to be perfectly honest um, as a progressive. Not really sure where I would stand on that bill because it really is a very conservative bill. And as far as I'm concerned, Trump, saved us <laughs> from having to deal with this. It's just a matter of, hey, this is Trump's fault. But that was a true compromise. Like, the president was willing to compromise a lot so that we could get some immediate relief. And I was very concerned about the longstanding ramifications of that bill. And again, when you see Senator Langford, that is because that bill was actually probably the reddest immigration bill that we will ever have an opportunity to potentially vote on. Um, so, you know, the fact that they passed a supplemental that didn't include the border information, I am perfectly fine with that. I'm just ready for them to get that onto the floor because this is a matter of national security. 
Um, you know, the, the, I, I know that most people aren't necessarily paying attention to foreign relations and what's going on all around the world, but we can't wake up one day and end up and say, well, how did we get here? How did we end up being attacked? How did we end up having to send our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, our uncles, our husbands overseas? Like what happened? And it would be because of the failures of the House Republicans, maybe just so that they can campaign on it. But I just don't think that we should ever use something like national security as a pawn in political games. So um, the president, he was throwing some shade last night. Uh, today, right at the Supreme Court. Uh, oh yeah, I love I love the uh, at Supreme Court. Well, today he was on the road and he was still feeling a little feisty. Listen to this. If you're tired, you probably watched my address last night. <laughs> I got my usual warm reception from Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene. In my address, I spoke about how far we've come since we took office. I talked about how much is at stake. Folks, our freedoms really are on the ballot this November. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans are trying to take away our freedoms. That's not an exaggeration. Well, guess what? We will not let him. We will not let him. Of course, made a comment about uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, and your leader, uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic minority leader. Uh, he was a little fired up at his new news conference today about Taylor Greene and other Republicans. We are going to continue uh, to find bipartisan common ground, exercising common sense whenever and wherever possible with our Republican colleagues on any issue. And we've done that repeatedly from the very beginning of this Congress with respect to avoiding a catastrophic default on our nation's debt, funding the government, repeatedly keeping it open and avoiding a shutdown, passing the National Defense Authorization Act, securing $16 billion in assistance for communities that have been devastated by extreme weather events, passing tax legislation that includes the low-income housing tax credit and an enhanced child tax credit, and most recently, providing the majority of votes necessary to get the first six appropriations bills over the finish line. We are going to continue to govern in a common sense way, and we're just asking our Republican colleagues to stop the political stunts. That was an embarrassment last night. A complete embarrassment. Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's basically running the House Republican Conference, shows up in campaign paraphernalia. And then these people want to lecture Joe Biden because he delivered a strong and forceful speech that made them uncomfortable because he exposed their lies and shamelessness. We have one message for extreme MAGA Republicans who want to lecture us about the quorum. Get lost. You're a joke. <coughs> Exhibit A, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Exhibit B, George Santos. Looks like shade is going all around the Democratic caucus. <laughs> I'm here for it. Listen, I was mad. We were all mad. Y'all probably couldn't see it because they weren't necessarily focused in on us. But we were um, looking at the sergeant at arms and we're like, yo, like kick her out, like get rid of her. Um, and our, our the former person that had that role was a black woman. And we were like, if Miss Joyce was here, Miss Joyce would have made sure that the Capitol Police went and rounded her up like Miss Joyce did not play. And so for people that don't know, we are not allowed per our rules to wear any hats, whether you're wearing a cowboy hat or definitely no baseball caps. Like, you are not allowed to do that. And the rules also, no campaign, but no campaign Correct. stuff. Correct. So I was going there, too. So the, so the thing is this. She was a double whammy, right? And the fact that she just sat there and she basically told him, well, you can find me, like, whatever. I'm not leaving. I'm not taking it off. And it was absolutely ridiculous. But this is who she is. She has never felt as if the rules apply to her. And again, when we start talking about what privilege looks like, it looks like this trailer trash chick from Georgia 
who somehow is a member of Congress, but baby, she has not left the trailer trash in Georgia. She brings it to the floor every single day and she does not care about the rules. And for some reason, she still has a hold on this Republican Party. These people who supposedly are real politicians are following behind this fool. Uh, and, and that is exactly the case. Uh, and so, uh, look, you got Speaker Mike Johnson sitting back there just, you know, making all these frowns and everything like that. I mean, I mean frankly, he, he, you know, he, he looks like uh, a toad, uh, you know, trying to sit here and, and, and lead the crazies. And if we actually look at the results, they don't get anything done. They don't pass bills, and they depend upon Democrats to get stuff done. It, yeah, it's absolutely right. I mean, if the Republicans really wanted to be successful, the most successful thing that they could have done is put in a speaker that understands what it means to govern and basically saying, listen, we will go to our conference first. But ultimately, if our conference is giving us problems because of an extreme one, two, three, four, or 10 or 12, we'll just go to the Democrats. It is easier to deal with a Hakeem Jeffries. It is easier to deal with the Democrats. And you may not get all the Democrats, but you don't need all of them. You only need about 10 or 12. And honestly, on any given day, if you are trying to do something that is going to help the American people, you will find a lot more help by going and grabbing 10 or 12 Democrats than you ever will find trying to go and get MAGA to be on board. In fact, you'll do all of these flips and turns and everything for MAGA, and what will they do? They will kick you out on your butt. Go ask Kevin McCarthy if I'm lying. So, uh, I, 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 again, I love how the crazy right responds, and poor Sean Hannity was just beside himself. <laughs> Listen to this. Uh, we saw, I felt, the president that was screaming, yelling, kind of ranting, a speech that was completely partisan. Maybe for reasons that Joe, uh, I guess, maybe just known to himself, but I thought it was beyond bizarre at times and, frankly, a little frightening because it's so different than the everyday, everyday Joe that we see and hear from. What was your reaction to, to such a dramatic difference? Oh, so now, saw, so uh, I'm I trying to confuse now. That so was, first we're sleepy, uh, then we're incompetent, and then we have no cognitive understanding. Now it's, oh, he was high. <laughs> you know, uh, they are willing to say anything that will disparage the president of the United States. You know, it would be easier to just go ahead and accept some truths than to continue to contort yourself uh, in ways that your body is not supposed to be contorted um, for the purpose of trying to spin in a way that will benefit this for uh Four time indicted, 91 count having, um, found liable of sexual assault, defaming person that is running your party. Like, it's easier. And honestly, you get some type of credibility if you just say, listen, you know, it's like Fox News has had to admit over and over and over that the job numbers are astronomically good. Like, it, it just is what it is, right? Like, you can argue and say, you know what? Joe Biden has done what Democrats do, period. But we're conservatives, and that's not what we believe in. That's cool. Like, that's what you say. And you start to sell your brand. You start to sell your platform. But the problem is that the Republican Party has moved so far into a direction that no one understands that MAGA doesn't have a platform. The only platform that we get out of MAGA is ignorance and hate. And that's not a platform. So, you know, honestly, the Republicans should take an attitude of we need to take our party back. If we take our party back, there are people that agree with us on our, our principles, even if Democrats don't. That's not the point. You've never we've never agreed with y'all. Right. But right now you have no identity um, as it relates to policy, for sure. And so instead, you just make up lies about the president, because last time I checked, he was supposedly a senile old man. Now y'all mad and talking about how partisan he was and all these crazy things. I mean, and they also, obviously, with the impeachment inquiry, they think that he's some sort of criminal mastermind. Like, pick a lane and ride it.
All right, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, always glad to see you. Uh, it was uh, indeed hilarious to watch last night, and they still are having meltdowns. Absolutely. Have a uh, good one. Thanks a bunch. All right, folks, when we come back, did y'all see that crazed, deranged woman in the kitchen last night? Oh, she was cooking. She was cooking up a big pot of crazy. <laughs> y'all ought to see Matt over there laughing, y'all. Matt, Matt, <laughs> y'all ought to see Matt. She, Matt, she has a big ass pot of crazy she cooked last night. I like it. I like it. I like where you went with that. And we're going to show y'all some of that crazy when we get back. It is hilarious. Back in the moment, Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. On the next A Balanced Life with me, Dr. Jackie, just who do you think you are? And maybe more importantly, who is it that you think you're trying to please? The answer to that second question is really wrapped up in the first. Think about that, being the true, authentic you, no matter the circumstance. But we learn the art of forgiveness, not only of forgiving one another, but forgiving ourselves. And we also learn how to love ourselves so that we can love each other. That's next on A Balanced Life, here on Black Star Network. On the next Get Wealthy with me, Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, I'm sure you've heard that saying that the only thing guaranteed is death and taxes. The truth is that the wealthy get wealthier by understanding tax strategy. And that's exactly the conversation that we're gonna have on the next Get Wealthy, where you're going to learn wealth hacks that help you turn your wages into wealth. Taxes is one of the largest expenses you ever have. You really got to know how to manage that thing and get that under control so that you can build wealth. That's right here on Get Wealthy, only on Black Star Network. What's the love king of R&B, Raheem Devon? It's me, Sherry Shepard, and you know what you're watching. You're watching Roland Martin, Unfiltered. Okay, the response to the State of the Union is really a complete waste of time. It's really, it's a joke. Uh, I mean, we can think back to Bobby Jindal, who was awful. Uh, we can think back to, uh, do, do y'all remember this here? That was, that was Marco Rubio. Uh, even, I mean, even when Stacey Abrams did it from the Union place in Atlanta, I was like, eh. Uh, but I think right now we have a topper. We have undeniably the worst State of the Union response in American history. And that comes to us courtesy of Alabama Senator Katie Britt, who decided last night to do it from the kitchen, considering that's the place where, you know, Republicans want women to stay. I guess it was apropos. But she cooked up a pot of crazy. Now, the folks at Alabama.com, of course, that's uh, you know the, the newspaper in the state. They they, they posted this video, uh, and, and they cover her all the time. And th this video had me just rolling because it shows you how she talked last night. Now she really talks. Watch. I am looking forward to delivering the Republican response to the State of the Union. So tune in, President. Biden's border policies are a disgrace. 
This crisis is despicable. And the truth is, it is almost entirely preventable. And thank you to all the gentlemen behind me who continue to work diligently to actually secure our border. That's what the American people deserve. But unfortunately, Joe Biden refuses to give that to them. Mr. President, enough is enough. Innocent Americans are dying, and you only have yourself to blame. Everything that we put forth that would actually secure and close the border, the Democrats don't want. This is yet another prong of the failed Bidenomics. This is the definition of America last. The American people are scraping by while President Biden proudly proclaims that Bidenomics is working. Goodness, y'all. Bless his heart. I am looking forward to delivering the Republican response to the state of the I have no idea what the <laughs> hell we just witnessed. <laughs> I know what we that, just witnessed. That, that <laughs> was a sitting United States <laughs> senator who was speaking from her kitchen and she was scaring the shit out of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did a fantastic I, job too, Ron. I, 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 so, Michael, what yes. is your response <laughs> to what she said. <laughs> Roland, who knew that Alabama had two of the dumbest uh, U.S. senators oh in the Senate? You got Tommy Tuberville and you've got Katie Britt, old dummy and young dummy. But um, what you saw was a MAGA hostage video. That's what it looked like, a MAGA hostage video. So I was sitting here last night. I was watching your State of the Union coverage and I had MSNBC on here in the office. And I was watching you all discuss it without me. And then I was, I turned, I looked up and I'm watching. I said, how did my TV change channels to a horror video? Because I'm listening to her. She sounds like she's on the verge of tears. Then she starts talking about a woman who was, you know, horrifically uh, gang raped. Uh, by men, things like this. And then she's talking about the need for Biden to address the border. But you Republicans just killed a border bill that you've been trying to get for 30 years, and you left Senator Langford of Oklahoma out to dry because Donald Trump told you to kill the bill. But, but then you support a man who was found liable of rape, committing rape against E. Jean Carroll, but now you're calling out rapists. OK, so I'm listening to this whole convoluted nonsense and it it, it uh, they fell into uh, President Biden's trap that he laid for them because he talked about how crazy they were. And Republicans showed their entire ass last night and proved to America this is what you're going to get right. if they get more power. And if, if Trump gets a second term in office. So this was the response of Trump white nationalist advisor Stephen Miller. He tweeted the following. The SOTU response from <laughs> Senator Katie Britt is a grand slam. Total <laughs> evisceration of Joe Biden. Deep emotional connection with the American people. And a rhetorical <laughs> sledgehammer to Biden's sinister border invasion. What say you, Kelly? You are mean to me <laughs> because this is just not fair. I just started breathing again, man. <laughs> anyway, um, when I saw this, uh, her, the response, I immediately thought of Handmaid's Tale, like, under his eye. Like, I really thought the cadence of her voice definitely reminded me of the the first wife of one of the generals or whatever. I can't remember her name. 
Um, but it was it was very much giving Stepford wife. It was giving robotic. And frankly, it, it sounded like she had to convince herself that what she was saying was true or like she was saying it against her will. Like, I would not be surprised if somebody was behind the camera with like her dog threatening to kill it because that's what she sounded like. Um as far as what she was saying, I pretty much ignored. I was half asleep for most of it, to be completely honest with you. It's been a long week. I am not going to stay up to listen to lies in response to somebody telling the truth. That's just the fact of the matter of it all. Um, but, yeah, you're you're mean to me. I don't understand. Like, I just started breathing again. I, um, I You know what? I, here, I, I, I found it. I, I, I found it, Matt. I think I know what happened. Um, because she was in a kitchen um, giving the response, uh, I think she was inspired by this. Sisters, Miss Broiler, <laughs> Miss Fryer, Miss Roaster, Miss Capernet, Miss Stewart, and old Madam Hen. But we're spotlighting Miss Roaster of the Year, measuring in at 14, 15, 14. We're roasting. I think she was inspired by Julia Childs, Matt. I got to say, Roland, you are doing your absolute best work today, my brother. Uh, number one. <laughs> number two, shout out to the brother in the chat, Beamer Driver, who said she was cooking up unseasoned chicken and lies. That took me out of here. So thank you for that comment. But all jokes aside, I'll tell you two things. The first thing that I, I thought when I was watching it is not only was it absurd, but honestly, I thought this is exactly what white women used to do to brothers back in the day, right? You know, maybe there's a, uh, an allegation that something happened and then the moment it becomes advantageous, you turn on these fake crocodile tears. And that's what was so scary about this was how quickly she could go from being, you know, the wannabe beloved soccer mom talking about her two kids and making snacks for them and all this stuff to President Biden is trying to kill you. I mean, it was, it was very... Um, it was obviously fake. And that's a lot of what bothers me, not only about the State of the Union, but about her her presentation, is that they're almost playing in our faces, right? Instead of having substantive conversations, one, it's all reactionary, and it's before, frankly, he's even given his speech. A lot of that was surely crafted before then. But there's a level of pageantry where it's almost like they don't take the voters serious. And for anybody who watched that, I mean, all people should have been disrespected because it was very clear she was putting on a show more than she was talking about substantive policy. And the policy she talked about was complete BS. I mean, the idea that, you know, they would reference Putin yep. and the guy they're following behind is the biggest fan of Putin and somehow trying to claim that Joe Biden is not stopping Putin's march is just intellectually dishonest and it, it's completely uh, bogus. And I don't know why they had her take that tack. Um, I get conceptually the the thing in the kitchen and trying to play to middle America white voters and fear monger. But I mean, anybody who has a brain in their head realized that she was putting on a horrible show and, and none of that was serious. Man. And I wanted to tell you that I loved Jonathan Capehart's response because I watched it on PBS and they went to him and he couldn't control it. I mean, he was just like, this is are you serious? We just watched this garbage. And I think a lot of people felt that way. I mean, it really was the uh, prime example of white woman's yep. tears being weaponized. It, <clears throat> was, it was, absolutely was a joke. All right, folks, got to go to break. We come back. What I'm about to talk about next is not a joke. How a white Republican in Tennessee lies to the face of the family of Tyree Nichols, and they are trying to undo all of the hard work to hold cops accountable in Memphis, I told you these people do not care about black people. They do not care about local control. They do not care about small government. What they care about are protecting cops. That is next on Roller Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Talk about blackness and what happens in black culture. We're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause 
too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. I'm Farai Muhammad, live from L.A., and this is The Culture. The Culture is a two-way conversation. You and me, we talk about the stories, politics, the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. So join our community every day at 3 p.m. Eastern and let your voice be heard. Hey, we're all in this together, so let's talk about it and see what kind of trouble we can get into. It's The Culture, weekdays at 3, only on the Black Star Network. What's up, y'all? This is Wendell Haskins, a.k.a. Wynn Hogan at the Original Tee Golf Classic. And you know I watch Roland Martin Unfiltered. For a long time, I have said uh, the most despicable uh, Republicans on the state level in America were those in North Carolina. Not any longer. They are absolutely replaced by Republicans in Tennessee. We have seen how spineless these cowards are. We have seen how they expel the two Justins, Representative Justin Jones from Nashville, Representative Justin Pearson out of Tennessee. We've seen how they have a shutdown debate how they have tried to stifle dissent. But now, these shameless, despicable thugs are using the power of uh, them controlling the state government to stop local, local governments from holding police accountable. State Rep. John Gillespie pushed forward a bill that would do this. The family of Tyree Nichols, black man beaten to death by Memphis cops, they successfully got the council to pass a bill to hold police accountable. Well, Gillespie wants to overturn that. So, as we discussed the other day, the Nichols family goes to the state capitol. Because their president, present, he goes, oh, not going to bring the bill up till next week. They leave. The next day, he moves it forward. This is a conversation Gillespie had with the family, y'all. With the family. It was a conversation he had with them. Uh, you guys showed it earlier. Put it up. It, so he was talking to them. Go ahead and press play. There's something else we need to do here, man. Pass your beer. We need to come to the table together and figure out the solution and, and not over. And so I really would love for you to just sit down and talk yeah. to us before you push this bill through. Because yeah. I really feel like even we might can come to some agreement. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'd love because to have that I'm not saying that everything is right and everything is wrong. Okay? Because uh, I work tirelessly, my husband, this Amber. lady, uh, all these people have worked tirelessly mm -hmm. to push this son, bill. To push this ordinance for my son, for our son. Yeah. So, what I would ask you to do for my son, put this bill off for today, and okay. then give, me a, give us a chance to sit down and talk. And then. We can come to another. When do y'all go back or when will you be in Memphis again? In person. We come back this week. We can't. Well, I hate to. No, we don't have no problem. We don't. We're, 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 we're open. If we have to come back this week, we just name a day. Okay. We can sit down and talk. Okay. And I'll give you my number. Yeah. And, and we can come back and we can help. Okay. He straight lied 
to the face of Tyree's mother, Rovon Wells, her husband, Rodney Wells. They join us right now, along with the attorney, Ben Crump. Um, Rovon, you were quite emotional in that video. What is your response to this man just lying in y'all's face? Roland, thank you for having us. Thank you. Um, it was a kick in the face. I mean, he literally said that he would sit down and speak with us, and then he turned around and passed the bill anyway. So to me, it was a kick in the face. Um, he lied, and he just showed he had no character. Rodney, I say no character, no morals, no values, no ethics, no principles. Um, word is supposed to be bond. That's biblical. Mm -hmm. And what, 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 what he did and what these Republicans did, they said, the hell with y'all, the hell with your son, the hell with the work with the Memphis City Council. They said, we know what's best to deal with mm -hmm. police officers. Forget the people who actually are in charge of that police department. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what he did. Okay. Yes, sir. So, you know, uh, as you stated, he lied to our face, and then he called me and lied to me, yes, to did. my face, you know, on the phone, saying that he was going to push it off until next Thursday. So we was all set to go back Wednesday to be in session on Thursday. And uh, so we said, okay, he called me, said that he was going on vacation. And when he came off of vacation, he was going to sit down and talk with me and my wife. And then we was going to go over to, you know, the uh, arrangements that he was trying to propose. And then turned around Thursday morning, we started getting all of these calls and emails. And, you know, he's about to put it to the floor now. He's about to put it to the floor now. And before we know it, it had passed. Yes. Ben, um, Gillespie is trying to call this a miscommunication. We, we got it on video. Yeah. He's literally saying, oh, I would love to have that conversation. He's lying. Yeah, and Roland, that's remarkable journalism that you can show our people on video the deceit and the insincerity when he's talking to parents whose child literally was beaten to death. And what they're do, attempting to do, Roland Martin, is usurp the authority of local control of majority black city, Memphis, Tennessee, because they don't agree with how the black leadership has tried to put in place laws that will prevent the next Tyree Nichols. It literally is a flagrant disregard for the Constitution of the United States. It's an assault on the Fourth Amendment uh, constitutional guarantees against unlawful searches and seizures. And that's exactly what happened to Tyree Nichols. Uh, unlawful search of his car and seizure of his body that led to his death. And the, the law was to say, we're not going to have pretextual stops anymore for Memphis Police Department. They can't racially profile black people. But the uh, ruling power in the state of Tennessee, these MAGA Republicans said, no, no, we're going to outlaw the Memphis City Council's policies and procedures. The um, Ravon and Rodney, the thing about this, wh why this bill is important. This bill is important because, and I do, I do way too many of these stories. Mm -hmm. In so many instances where black men are being killed, it's over silly minor traffic stops. Mm -hmm. other, yes. other cities, other police chiefs, and other councils have said, stop stopping people for silly stuff like a tail light or uh, something hanging from their mirror. Because we know we've seen those stories. And that's, what, that's what this law is. And so here you have Republicans in the state capitol 
who are trying to tell the city of Memphis, which is responsible financially for, for their police department, and when they screw up, Memphis has to pay uh, those lawsuits uh, out, those settlements out, but this is them saying, we know what's best for Memphis, we're gonna be in control, we're gonna tell y'all what to do. They are looking to protect cops, they're not trying to protect taxpayers. And that is so true because even though this this ordinance is named after Tyree, this ordinance is to protect all the black and brown citizens of Memphis because we all know that when they stop most of us, it's not going to be good. Um, it's like they're harassing our young men in the first place. And as we all know, to this day, they still haven't told us why they stopped our son. They've come up with all these different excuses. However, none of it pans out. So what they're trying to do is really a slap in the face. And it just lets you know that Tennessee just don't care about what the citizens of Memphis thinks. And that's not good. That's not a good thing. Ben, the big problem here is with Republicans having super majorities all across the South, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina, and other places, we see how on Confederate monuments, how they tell local, uh, local uh, government how they uh, how could conduct their business. And we're seeing this in other areas. This is a perfect example. And when we see it happen in one place, these other Republicans begin to follow. And so this could be the undoing of a lot of that great work if other Republicans do what they're doing in Tennessee. Exactly, Roland. And that's why voting is so very important. I know in Florida, we are one senator seat away from destroying the supermajority. And that's what we got to encourage people as we think about this election and all the consequences that come with elections, Tyree Nichols' life matters the same way George Floyd and Breonna Taylor' life matter. And so if we can get people to vote in people who care about our community and our issues, then they hopefully will break this supermajority where they won't lie to Rovine and Rodney Wells' face and have some accountability. And I know Rovine and Rodney are going to uh, talk to the highest leaders in the land, President Biden, Vice President Harris, who have reached out to us now to talk about policing in America as they continue to try to figure out how we can get some reform in mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. um, Rodney, the House has passed it. The Senate will take it up. Do y'all plan to go back to the state capitol and talk to these senators and try to get them not to support advancing this bill? Yes, sir. A absolutely. Yes, sir. We'll be on the first thing smoking. <laughs> well, look, y'all keep us abreast. Uh, look, we, we, we stand with y'all as well. Uh, and we're going to call out these folks when they lie to our faces uh, and then want to try to blame it on something else. So uh, yeah. could continue uh, great work. And we're absolutely behind uh, y'all, uh, Rovans, uh, Stephen, uh, Ben. Uh, y'all keep fighting a good fight. Thank yes, you. sir. Thank you. We appreciate all the work you're doing. Speaking truth to power, Roland. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks a bunch. Y'all take care. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go to a break, and we'll talk about this with our panel when we come back. Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene. A white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. Soil, you will not white people are losing their damn minds. An angry pro-Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as 
has a backlash. This is the wrath of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. Jamia Pugh. I am from Coatesville, Pennsylvania, just an hour right outside of Philadelphia. My name is Jasmine Pugh. I'm also from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. You are watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. Stay right here. You know, Kelly, the, the thing I was just saying right there, I mean, this, this, is what, this is how they do. They love talking that smack about local control, big government, uh, getting in the way. But when they have the power, they want to tell progressive government what the hell to do. They've done this. Alabama did it in uh, there where they, they said, if you tear down a state monument without their permission, you get fined. Well, hell, Birmingham was like, fine, we're going to tear the son bitch down. They raised the money to pay the fine. And guess what? Statue is gone. Uh, the same thing to Montgomery when they removed a street named after a Confederate uh, trader uh, and named it uh, after uh, attorney Fred Gray. We see this in other states as well, where they, and what, what Tennessee has done is even more egregious. Not only with this action they're advancing, they actually disbanded a Nashville Citizens Review Board. Told Nashville, oh, no, y'all can't have that. And so this is what they do when they get power they then use it like a hammer, not only on the state level, but on the local level as well. You're absolutely right about that. But when they talk about states' rights, they're just talking about rights to um, regarding the federal rights and, and laws. They just want what would typically be federal law over a state to be given to them so they can have even more control over the state in which they legislate. So it is not surprising to me that they pulled a move like this. Um, the fact that it was disingenuous, the fact that they lied to uh, Tyree Nichols' family's face, um, the fact that, you know, they steamrolled over even uh, the progressives in the legislature, possibly, uh, uh, agreements that they had with them. Um, they will stop at nothing to get what they want. They will lie to get what they want. They will do whatever it takes to get what they want. And it doesn't matter if ethics are questionable, if morals are compromised. It does not matter so long as power are in their hands. They will do whatever it takes to keep it. You know, um, uh, Matt, um, the... the the family said something there uh, that, that I thought w was really important uh, in terms of, again, just understanding, um, you know, how they're operating and, and when they have the power. Ben Crump also said something when he talked about Florida, when he said, uh, we're one seat away from breaking uh, the Republican stranglehold. What I have said to people, when we talked about the power of voting, what I've said to people where our, why our vote matters is that you might be in a state where it's a red state, but there's a huge difference between Republicans having a supermajority and having a majority. A supermajority means they don't have to listen to Democrats. They can pass any bill without them, give them no consideration in the House and the Senate, and it's signed by a Republican, uh, a Republican governor. That's also, so being strategic means, hey, maybe we can't take over the, the House or the Senate, but the, our, our, I believe our focus as black folks and where white folks who are progressive, others should be, is stopping the supermajorities. 
Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And, you know, kind of uh, being connected with that is the idea of what we've seen with the federal districts in Louisiana. That's why it's so important that the Voting Rights Act still has teeth and that we live in communities where we actually get a say for who we want to elect to break those exact supermajorities. So I think he's right to point that out, as are you. And I think, you know, what's particularly problematic about this, as you've talked about it, um, you know, it's just so intellectually dishonest that they so often trumpet states' rights. I mean, look at what's happening in Texas right now. Greg Abbott is literally trying to control immigration, which has long been a federal issue, right? Because he's trying to claim the state of Texas has the right to control immigration. So they're okay with that until it comes to black people or it comes to people who they believe should not be able to wield that power. And that's why that's so important to break those supermajorities, because if they don't have to work with Democrats at all, then you can have no hope that bills like this, which on the local level, the city of Memphis should be able to control, uh, you know, being passed by the legislature to try to uh, overturn that. And here's the thing that's really important about that. The reason local control is so important is because local, you know, governments are the ones that have generally the greatest immediate effect on your life. So this bill would stop pretext stops in Memphis. And what I read showed that most of those pretext stops, as in most places, don't culminate in felony arrests or convictions. So what you have is you have police officers who are using ticky-tack reasons to pull people over to investigate other things. And the city of Memphis didn't think that was appropriate. If Tennessee and those Republican legislatures are following their own ideology, the city of Memphis has the autonomy to determine what should happen. But of course, you don't get that uh, luxury if you are black. And that's just the reality of what we see legislatures doing around the country. Uh, Michael. Yeah, Roland, uh, it, it appears that um, uh, Gillespie uh, lied to the family of Tyree Nichols. And also, it uh, it wasn't Dem Democrats in the the uh, state legislature it, uh, apparently are criticizing Gillespie as well for uh, bringing the bill to a full vote after the Nichols uh, family said they were that he assured them that it would be delayed a week. So, and for him to call it a miscommunication, I, it, it appears like he doesn't realize he was being recorded. You know, that conversation that you just showed, it appears like he doesn't know he was being recorded and then to call that a miscommunication. But it shows you can't trust these people. And one of the things that it appears is going on here, you 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 may have a lot of Republicans in the state legislature there in Tennessee who will say, what happened to Tyree Nichols is wrong, just like you have Republicans in the House who said what happened to George Floyd was wrong. But every Republican in the House representative representatives voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. See, when it came time to do something about what happened to these people, to these brothers, now Republicans are all on the same side and they don't want to change it because they see police officers as protecting them from us. And that's what this really boils down to. OK, they see police officers protecting white people from African-Americans. So this is why we have to take these people out of power. Yeah. And, and, and again, for all the people out here, it's it's fine. It's easy to be pissed off right now. Mm -hmm. But are you pissed off when it's time to vote? Are you pissed off when it's time to register? Are you pissed off at the ballot box? That is the greatest way to impact a politician is to vote them out, to campaign against them, to canvass, to go door to door to make sure they do not get reelected. That's where we have to be in this constant battle. Speaking of battle, we come back. A Texas federal judge has ruled that the Minority Business Development Agency, they now must service white people. Did I not tell y'all? We tried to tell you. They were coming after everything. Everything means everything. We'll discuss next on Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Join our Brina Fuck fan club. See your checking money order. P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 200-37-0196. Cash app, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered. PayPal, R. Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is, Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale, rolling at RolandSMartin.com. Rolling at RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. We'll be right back. For the last 15 or maybe 16 years, 18 years, I'll say, since I, when I moved to L.A., 
I hadn't had a break. I hadn't had a vacation. Probably like a week vacation here or there. Right. This year, after I got finished doing Queen Sugar and we wrapped it up, because I knew I had two TV shows coming on at the same time, mm-hmm. so I'm going to take a little break. So I've been on break for the first time, and I can afford it. Praise right. God. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So I can afford it. I'm like, I can right. sit back and ain't got nothing to worry about, man. But this was the first time in almost in, in two decades wow. that I've actually had time to sit back. Wow. And, and, and smell the roses. Next on The Black Table with me, Greg Carr. Democracy in the United States is under siege. On this list of bad actors, it's easy to point out the Donald Trumps, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, or even the United States Supreme Court as the primary villains. But as David Pepper, author, scholar, and former politician himself says, there's another factor that trumps them all and resides much closer to many of our homes. His book is Laboratories of Autocracy, a wake-up call from behind the lines. So these state houses get hijacked by the far right, then they gerrymander, they suppress the opposition, And that allows them to legislate in a way that doesn't reflect the people of that state. David Pepper joins us on the next Black Table, here on the Black Star Network. This is Essence Atkins. This is the Love King of R&B, Raheem Devon. It's me, Sherry Shepard, and you know what you're watching. You're watching Roland Martin, Unfiltered. All right, folks, I wrote, I dropped this book September 2022, White Fear, How the Browning of America is Making White Folks Lose Their Minds. What did I say in this book? They are going to be coming after 
every single program that they believe uh, gives us an advantage over them, even though nearly everything is white folks in this country. Well, guess what it happened on Wednesday? Go to my iPad, Anthony. Federal judge in Texas orders minority business agency open to all races. Now, the Minority Business Development Agency was created under President Richard Nixon. The purpose of this was to assist African Americans and other minorities when it comes to being able to do business uh, with the federal government, providing skills, resources, also access to dollars. Now, the federal government spends upwards, y'all, uh, of $600 billion annually in contracts. Go right to my iPad. In fiscal 2020, 2022, MBDA clients secured $1.6 billion in private and government contracts, agency data show. The agency also helped businesses raise $1.2 billion in capital, as well as create or retain roughly 16,000 jobs. Black-owned businesses received $680 million in contracts, the most of any group followed by Hispanic-owned businesses at $526 million. Now, understand that's 2%, that's less than 2% of federal contracts. Oh, so what do these, what do these white conservatives do? They sued. So they argued that, oh, these are discriminatory and then they give an unfair advantage uh, to certain groups as if white Americans have not had a massive advantage. So, what they did was they filed a suit in Texas. And let me explain to you what they're doing because they're judge shopping. They are specifically filing lawsuits in places knowing that judge is going to rule in their favor. All of y'all simple Simon fools who kept telling me I was making too, big, too much of a big deal about Biden and Harris appointing federal judges, do you dumbasses now see what I was talking about? This one, again, out of 900 plus federal judges in America, this one federal judge issues this opinion and rules that the MBDA must now serve everybody and not just minorities. Go to my iPad. This judge, Pittman, has emerged as a consistent conservative voice on a range of political, politically volatile issues. In November 2022, he struck down President Biden's student loan forgiveness program. Months earlier, he set aside a Texas law barring adults younger than 21 from carrying handguns after concluding that age restrictions violated the Second Amendment right to bear arms. Now, here's the deal. If the MBDA under the Commerce Department does not appeal this decision, this goes into effect all across the country. Scholars are now saying, oh, guess what? This ruling could very well change every single federal program that deals with disadvantaged businesses. Oh, I'm not done, simple Simons out there. Guess what's then gonna happen? They're gonna go after every state program. Then they're gonna go after every county program and every school district program and every city program. They're going to go after every single program. Oh, let's go beyond companies. They're going to go after corporate America. They've already gone after ac academia. So what they're saying is, oh no, you should be measuring everybody the same, even though white folks have been getting the hookup in everything. But y'all say the judges Biden Harris the point don't matter. Oh, uh, Trump gonna fill my pockets with some money, so we gonna roll with him. Stephen Miller, Trump's white nationalist top advisor, he was the one behind the lawsuit that stopped the money going to black farmers. So all you dumbasses running around here talking about Trump. When y'all tell me about Waka Flocka and Lil Wayne and Kodak Black and all of them, don't nobody want to talk about their lawsuits stopping and targeting black people. And you know what they're doing, Matt? They are even using the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1866 Civil Rights Act against black folks in these lawsuits. Matt? I was listening to a podcast this morning from the National Constitution Center, and they were talking about the recent uh, decision regarding uh, the insurrection and whether Trump could be barred from the ballot. 
And one of the contributors on there said something I never heard, but I thought was brilliant. He said, litigation as politics. Um, he said that litigation is often used as politics, and that's precisely what's happening here. Your comment on the venue shopping is exactly right um, with Pittman, especially because what he, what he said here is he said the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause essentially bars the MDBA from being able to consider race. But the reason we know that it exists is to make sure that you know, an imbalance is somewhat righted by creating an agency that helps uh, minority business owners. And I think what is so uh, problematic about this, but is so important to your point that you always make, is that, you know, there's just a fundamental presumption that when you step into a judge's courtroom, he or she is supposed to be fair. But the reality is there are lawyers, including me, when I file a lawsuit, I have to consider the venue where I'm filing it, right? If I, if I file in a judge's court where I know she's more inclined to be plaintiff friendly, then I know that that may help my client. Um, and that's essentially what they're doing here. But what's scary about it is you have judges who are deciding on bedrock issues and divesting people of longstanding constitutional rights um, using the same logic that put in place these agencies to support us. And what's scary about this is not only are they going to continue attacking state programs, we're in the Fifth Circuit, the most conservative appellate circuit in the entire country. So the idea that the Fifth Circuit is not going to rubber stamp this is absurd. They are likely going to rubber stamp it. And then you get to a conservative Supreme Court with a 6-3 majority that has already said universities can't use race in their determinations. So the problem with this is it's going to set a precedent or could set a precedent where all the programs that are in place to try to write that imbalance to some extent are going to be under attack. And we're going to be going back to before the 1960s and the Warren Court that put in place some of these uh, constitutional rights to to help us or recognize recognize these constitutional rights to give us a fair shot in this country. So when you look at uh, the, the the suit, uh, uh, Kelly, uh, one is a guy out of Fort Worth. Another is a, uh, a immigrant from communist uh, Romania. Go to my iPad. Another one uh, is uh, is a white is a white man uh, out of Colorado, and then their whole deal is like, oh, they just wanted to be able to grow their businesses, and uh, they all worked hard to get where they are. They all overcame obstacles in pursuit of the American dream. They all cared deeply about their businesses, and they all wanted but couldn't obtain assistance from the same federal program. They're also white, a salient detail in this case. Now, guess what? What, what, what Pittman didn't talk about are the programs that the federal government had to benefit women. See, when a Tennessee federal judge uh, ordered changes to the 8A program, it was because a white woman apl apl applied, oh, I, I, same thing, I'm looking to grow my business and I can't use those services. But guess where she actually helped grow her business? Through one of the programs for women, white women. Now, she didn't mind that program, but she sued for the minority program and got that, and, and got that thrown out. That's what we're dealing with. We're going to see these. And I'm telling you, everybody who's watching and listening better buckle up. They are going to go after any and every program in America that tries to offer some assistance to black people and others when we have had to deal with centuries of white racism white affirmative action, white DEI, white uh, business development uh, programs. What I find so insidious about this entire situation is the notion that they keep pushing that these programs for minorities is the only way to get business. And that if white people aren't in them, then they are at a disadvantage when there are plenty of other ways to get business that don't require, frankly, the strenuous <laughs> processes that are uh, uh, are available and, and, and have to be done in order to get into that program, to be approved for that program, to get money from that program. So it, it's insidious in that there's actually an easier way for these white people to get money, and that's just to apply to any other program. But the fact of the matter is they can't stand the thought of black people, of minorities, having any type of 
advantage, which I, I don't even like using that word in this context because it's not even an advantage so much as it is a a, a balancing act. It, it tips the scale so that everything is relatively equal. I'm not even going to say fully equal, but rel more equal than it was. And they can't stand the fact that there are people in this country, Black people in this country, who are just as good as them and, and actually need the help because they've been so disenfranchised. And it, it, it just comes off as greedy, as insidious. As it exceeded hatred for Black people as a whole to be as full Americans as white people have already been. So, Michael, here's what they're trying to say. Oh, well, the categories are just too broad, so they're assuming that this applies to all, and so then they go, well, this doesn't apply to an Oprah, so this is just too broad and unfair. Yeah, you know, this is, the hu this is a huge backlash to um, two terms of President Barack Obama. And uh, it was unleashed under—this backlash was unleashed under uh, Donald Trump's administration. Going back to—we can look at September 2020, when uh, Trump was in office and he did uh, an executive order banning uh, critical race theory being used in uh, training for federal employees. Then he starts attacking the 1619 Project, okay? And September 2020 was six months before uh, Christopher Rufo, Rufo put out his tweet talking about how they were going to— uh, redefine what critical race theory was, right, and then start attacking it. So all this is all this is uh, all combined together, and this is uh, trying to attack any programs that are perceived as being beneficial to African Americans. So th this is why uh, the judicial branch of government is so important, because they interpret law from the legislative branch of government, and they interpret policies coming from executive branches of government. So we're going to see more of this. And when, when you had the sisters on from the Fearless Fund, OK, you talked about how we were going to see more of this and how they were going to uh, use that, that lawsuit from Ed Bloom. He, he was really, you said he was really trying to attack corporations. Here we see this attack on the federal government. And for them to use the 14th Amendment, which was created for African Americans, the 14th Amendment of 1868, now they're trying to use that uh, Reconstruction Constitution against us and then trying to use the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which allowed African Americans to enter into contracts, legal agreements. That was specifically for African Americans. Now they're trying to use that against us also. So this is why elections have consequences and why it's important to understand history. And once again, we have to take these people out of power because it's going to get worse if we don't fight back. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I keep. And so for all y'all simple Simons, I mean, you ain't not about a democratic shill. Are you done and said to hell, you know, uh, uh, shilling for the Democrats? Do you idiots realize every single one of these judges ruling against affirmative action, ruling against the MBDA, ruling against the Fearless Fund, ruling for all of these folks, they're all conservative Republican appointed judges. Mm -hmm. Can I jump in there? Brother? Go ahead. Can I say something? I just wanted to say, Michael really hit something on the head that's super important. These judges very often are textualists, and they talk about what the, the constitutional amendment was at the time, why it came about. And I'm so glad he mentioned that, because when you look at these Reconstruction era uh, amendments, like the 14th Amendment, it was put into place to protect us, right? So the idea right. that a judge would use it as a bludgeon against the very people it was intended to protect is not only intellectually dishonest, but it shows you the reality of a conversation I was having with a lawyer the other day in the elevator um, in Travis County, where he said, man, I'm mad about that, su that Supreme Court ruling. It very often seems like judges just come up with the destination and make up BS to get to that destination. And that's what mm -hmm. you're seeing in this case. That's what you're seeing in all of these cases. There's a judge who is politically inclined to not like the idea that people are getting equality through the implementation and the, uh, the interpretation of these amendments. So he or she just decides that they're going to find a way to take that right away. Well, excuse me. 
cases. People don't realize it, but it's intellectually dishonest if your whole ideology is textualism because the 14th Amendment came about to protect the very people it was used as a bludgeon against in this uh, order. And again, for folks who don't understand this here, federal judges are appointed by the president. Federal right. judges are confirmed by the United States Senate. So if you want more judges like this guy, by all means, go vote for Trump. And by all means, elect the Republican United States Senate. But if you don't like this ruling, you might want to vote for Biden-Harris. And then mm -hmm. you might want to make sure that Democrats control the Senate. I keep telling y'all, all this stuff is related. Going Student to, loan forgiveness. Go on to a mm -hmm. break. We'll be right back. Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037- 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Grow your business or career with Grow with Google's wide range of online courses, digital training, and tools. Gain in demand job skills with flexible online training programs designed to put you on the fast track to jobs in high growth fields. No experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace. Complete the online certificate program on your own terms. Stand out to employers, get on a path to in-demand jobs, and connect with top employers who are currently hiring. Take one professional career certificate program, or all six. Earn a Google Career Certificate to prepare for a job in a high-growth field like data analytics, project management, UX design, cybersecurity, and more. All professional career certificate programs must be completed by December 31st, 2024. Scan the QR code to complete the application. There are 1,000 scholarships available. Grow with Google and J. Hood and Associates. Be job ready and qualify for in-demand jobs. Hi, everybody. I'm Kim Coles. Hey, I'm Dolly Simpson. Yo, it's your man Dion Cole from Blackish, and you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. <laughs> All right, fam, I saw a couple of great videos that I thought, you know what, I might as well share with Michael, Matt, uh, and Kelly on this Friday before the weekend. And so, check this one out. What is your favorite word? Rural. What is your least favorite word? Unvarnished. What turned you on? Putin's brutal aggression in Europe. What turned you off? Bidenomics. What sound or noise do you love? Or... What sound or noise do you hate? Moms and dads, just like you. What is your favorite curse word? Alabama. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Sweeping the floor at my dad's hardware store. What profession would you absolutely not like to mess around with? I'm cleaning the bathroom at my mom's dance studio. And if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Are you better off now than you were three years ago? What is your favorite word? Rural. What is your least favorite word? Unvarnished. Oh, you know, uh, I had to have a little fun with that one. Uh, also, um, uh, Kelly actually might like this one. Go. Imagined what my story would entail. To think about what the American dream can do across <laughs> to just one generation in just <laughs> one lifetime. It's truly breathtaking. But... Right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare. 
I never could have imagined what my son. All right, let's come, come on. Sorry, y'all. So uh, that was uh, that. That was pretty good one here. I thought this one also was uh, pretty good. Has two mommies. I have to send my kids to school where there are books that aren't the Bible. <laughs> How can I explain this to my children, Bridgestone and Esther? Y'all, as a mom, I have dinner on the stove. Shit, I forgot. This will be just a second. Innocent people. <laughs> All right, let me. I saw one more, uh, which I thought was uh, pretty, uh, pretty funny. Uh, here we go. So I, I can't, I can't wear shoes. My feet are freezing. They said I have to be barefoot. Okay. Can we? I think it'd be easier if we did this in my office. You know, where I, where I work. I'm a senator. I could do it in the office. No, we, we have to do it in the kitchen. You won't. My husband to do it in the office, but my my husband's I'm the senator. He's not. He's not, I'm the. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. I love I love this line about empty seats at the kitchen table. I can, I really can't believe they're gonna let me talk about gun violence. Oh. Oh. It's not. It's not about guns. It's about illegal immigrants. Okay. Does that. Is that a bigger problem than guns? Now I'm so confused. No, no, okay. But... I, 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 I just couldn't let go of it, Kelly. <laughs> the Handmaid's Tale one is officially my favorite. Her name is now of Mitchell. Um, if you don't understand that reference, I can't help you because it's taking it's going to take way too long for me to give you the full story of how that is related to the Handmaid's Tale. But her name is now of Mitchell. Um, that was just a very weird response to a State of the Union address. It, it, it was just yeah. weird. And, and in fact, um, this was Speaker Mike Johnson uh, as he watched um, Senator Britt deliver her uh, speech. He was just disgusted, Matt. <laughs> As was I watching Katie Britt and watching him back there trying to make himself frown on half of it. And then when he clapped, he tried to act like he wasn't clapping kind of uh, a little bit. It's it's all pageantry, man. But that Katie Britt mashup was hilarious. And the woman that said Bridgestone and Esther took me smooth out of here. That's that's too Bridgestone. funny. Bridgestone. Her, her, like, uh, yeah, her kids' names are like Rid Ridgeway and something, <laughs> but uh, Bridgestone and Esther just took me clean out of here, man. That's hilarious. Oh, man. Um, I will, um, here's the last one, Michael. Good evening. I am a United States senator coming to you from my kitchen where women really belong. I've got to talk to you about Joe Biden. That speech that we just saw was such a performance. And I don't know about you, but I am sick of performances by politicians because I am just like you. And that's why I'm at my kitchen table. This is where I do my most important and favoritest job in the world. Being a mom to my daughter biblically and my son, Bridgerton. The other day, I took my kids to the playground because I'm a really good mom. And there was a rogue chihuahua that came up and started barking at my kids and terrified them. And I'm pretty sure that this chihuahua was an illegal because of Joe Biden's America. I am so worried sick that my daughter is gonna grow up one day and have the right to choose. Okay. Do you really want to live in a world where our kids have to learn that the Civil War was about slavery? It's just not white. I mean, it's not right. Ask yourself, 
Are you better off today than you were three years ago in the middle of a global pandemic where thousands of our loved ones were dying every day? Huh? Is my cross visible? Okay. Michael? Good evening. <laughs> well, well, first of all, <laughs> okay, number one, I thought about ha Handmaid's uh, Tale, Handmaid's Tale, whatever the hell it's called. I don't watch the show, but I've seen enough about it to know that's what that looked like. Okay, number one. Number two, um, Katie Britt asked, are you better off today? That's one of my notes here. Are you better off today than you were three years ago? You mean 2021 during COVID? Hell yes! We're better off today than we were three years ago. That backfired on her dumb ass. She didn't think that one. She did not think that one through. Okay? Of course we're better off today. And, and it was Joe Biden that saved America and Kamala Harris that saved America and got us out of COVID and got the schools oh. open back up. OK, when when Republicans were saying open the schools, it was the Democrats who funded opening the schools with the one point nine trillion dollar American rescue plan. So, you know, I'm so glad America got to see two of the dumbest Republicans, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who could be Donald Trump's vice president nomination. OK, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Katie Britt, America, you have a choice. OK, you can go with stupid ass people like this who are who are just just today uh, Donald Trump was meeting with Viktor Orban of Hungary, okay, a dictator. You can go down the road of authoritarianism or we can continue to save America, make it much better, okay, not great, but much better with Biden and Harris. So, and also uh, in the, in the, in the uh, YouTube chat, shout out to Deanna Pa who said Michael slimmed down. Yes, I've lost 35 pounds. Thanks for recognizing uh Deanna. Probably eating Katie Britt's chicken. <laughs> Probably lost to eating Katie Britt chicken. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm a vegetarian. I'm back. I work out five days a week. Got my diet under no, control. I lost 35 pounds. You know, pop my collar. Yes. Congratulations, brother. Feeling good. 52 years old. You know, best shape since 2014. So <laughs> thank you for noticing, uh, Dieta Pie, on YouTube. Are, P.I. Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, thanks, Roland. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I think I'm, that's all my notes. I'm, yeah, but it looked like a hostage video that Katie, Katie just, Britt did, I'm, like I said. I'm just checking. I mean, you know, since we, you just... <laughs> hey, you know, know, I'm trying to represent for Phi Beta I'm, Sigma looking smooth. You know, hey, Brotherhood Scholarship and Service. Anybody else <laughs> want to reveal their workout plans? Anybody? <laughs> anybody I else? do um, Insanity, Sean T. Insanity, five days a week and lift weights. Yep, so it works. <laughs> Insanity well, you know max cardio. You ask about workout plans, I do want to say that Crunch Fitness has a new black president, a friend of mine from Howard University. Shout out to Shaquan Lewis, young brother doing big things. That's good. Okay, so <laughs> Ellie, you want to shout I anybody out? Since, you know... I don't know what the hell part of the show this exactly. is, but you know anybody. It's a new segment, any, Kelly. Any, anybody you trying to shout Work out? Work out with I mean, Roro. Anybody you trying Roro. to shout out? Go ahead. I mean, since you know we just shouting people out. Hey, mom. <laughs> well, this is in your chat. No, this is on your YouTube channel, Roland. I'm in your YouTube. I'm in the chat on your on your YouTube channel. I'm I'm hyping you up. And Roland being frying people. And, and hit the like the button, everybody on YouTube. Hit the like button. <laughs> this man fried all day. Y'all done? Y'all done? I guess so. Okay, just, <laughs> just checking. Uh, let, let me remind everybody uh, who's watching uh, that uh, that Katie, that Britt, she's the junior senator from um, from Alabama. Um, Y'all know who's the um, the senior senator? Oh, Tommy Tuberville. Dumbass Tommy Tuberville. Uh, That's what I said. Big so dummy, little dummy. I just, I mean, so I just want y'all to understand. Um, senator Britt has actually made Tommy Tuberville the smartest senator from Alabama. Mm -hmm. Do you know how hard that is? This is the idiot who did not even know what this
Voting Rights Act was. Voting Rights Act, exactly. So um, that's it. We're done. Uh, since y'all are finished with y'all shout outs, discussing yep. your vegan eating plans and your workout <laughs> plans, shouting <laughs> mama out um, and your friends who now have new jobs. Uh, so we certainly appreciate y'all doing uh, all of that. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a little extra, uh, but you know, um, and 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 so it goes. So again, um, yeah. The show, all right. The show. The show is over. So Kelly, thank you. Matt, thank you. See you. This why I can't take him seriously. Michael, man. thank yep. you for being on the show. Uh, I, I now have to either go cry or laugh. All right, y'all, that's it. Uh, be sure to download the Black Star Network app, Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. Watch our 24-hour, seven-day-a-week streaming channel on all the available platforms. You can check us out, of course. Amazon News, go to Amazon Fire. You can also go to Plex TV. You can check us out also, of course, on Amazon Freebie as well as uh, Amazon Prime Video. Don't forget, y'all, to support us in what we do. Join our Bring the Funk fan club. Your dollars are critically important. Send your check and money order to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. Cash app, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered. PayPal, R. Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollinsmartin.com. Rolling at RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Be sure to get a copy of my book, White Fear, How the Brownie of America is Making White Folks Lose Their Minds. Available bookstores nationwide. Download the Audible audio version. I read it on Audible. And shout out to Virginia State University. Uh, I'm rocking uh, a jacket. Uh, my frat uh, president, Abdullah, uh, gave me, and so I uh, wanted to show them some love. Uh, and so, of course, I wore this week, uh, let's see, Lincoln University, and also I rock Jackson State University. So shout out to them. All right, folks, that's it. I'll see y'all on Monday right here on the blackest, realest show out here. Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Holla! <laughs>